A couple weeks ago, I painted this tutorial on light and shadow, but I got a lot of questions about how I painted the leaves of the plant so intuitively. So today we are going to talk about intuitive mark making as it applies to leaves and foliage. I'm going to show you what brush strokes you need to make, how to practice them, and how to apply it into a potted plant scene that we're going to paint together at the end. But first, let's start with mark making. Grab a piece of paper and do this with me right now. You can use a scrap piece of paper or the back of a piece of paper. Grab paints and a round brush. I'm using a round size 10. You can use any color, but for the ease of understanding what we're doing this for, I am going to be mixing up some green. So our first stroke is using the tip to body of the brush and we are just pushing down. You're going to do this all across your paper. You can even see how long it takes for your paint to run out, but this is a simple stroke that is just using the size of your brush to make the shape. Then we're gonna go the other way. The direction in which you push your brush changes the shape and the look of your leaf. So try it the other way and see how it feels doing it opposite. Now we are going to take that same kind of pressure where we're pushing down to the beginning to middle of our brush, but we are dragging this leaf down. So you can push down hard, drag farther and longer than I am, or you can push down just a little bit and create a slightly thinner leaf. The shape and roundness of your brush is also going to determine how wide your leaf is. Now we're going to do that same stroke going in the opposite direction. Now be mindful how you want the end of your leaf to look because as you can see, whether you pull it towards you or push it away from you, your brush stroke will look different at the end, which represents the tip of your leaf. Now using more of the body of the brush, we are going to do this kind of squarish shape pulling towards you. So instead of using the tip to body, we're using our brush sideways and using most of the body of the brush to make this stroke. We're going to do it towards us and we're going to do it away from us. Now I do this stroke a lot when I want a more rough organic leaf shape and I don't necessarily want it to look like a perfect pointy leaf. So I do have this stroke present a lot when I am doing foliage. And again, just note how different the strokes look depending on if you're pulling it towards you or pushing it away. Now we're going to get more into some of the textured strokes. So doing that same kind of pressure with the tip to the body of the brush like we did with the very first stroke, we're going to kind of do this tapping, jabbing motion. So the tip of our brush leads and we're making a lot of texture, but we want it to really connect. Think like trees and bushes. There's a lot of fullness, but you can still see the texture. Now we're going to do that same stroke, but we're going to do it in little bursts. So do some of that together where they combine and connect. You can still see the texture. And then we're going to put a gap and do another set. So this is where I will do, you know, maybe some of the leaves coming out of a tree or some leaves that are on a potted plant where it's just more wild and free and organic because I'm tapping and I'm kind of letting my brush lead those strokes. Now we're going to do the same pattern, but we're just using the tip of our brush, not really any of the body of our brush. So it's giving us a lot more tight texture. This is going to help us with details on bushes, plants, leaves, trees, pretty much anything. And again, this first set, we are trying to create lots of texture, but also merging everything together, making it one cohesive group that still has a lot of white space and texture and but more blended together. Then for this next set, again, we're using just the tip of our brush, but we're going to do it in those small bursts. So we're going to do a couple here together, make a space and then do another set. So the goal is to combine as many as you can, but let some of the edges and the texture come out because if they're too individual, if they're too on their own, they don't look right. So you need kind of a base body and then some of those little bits of texture can come off of that. Okay, we're grooving, we're going fast. If you need to pause, if you need to rewatch, go ahead and do that and we're going to keep going. We'll be here when you need us. But the next stroke is a stem stroke or 
a grassy stroke. We're pretty much just using the very tip of our brush with the most incredible light pressure. This is one of the reasons I love a round brush for foliage because you can use it in so many ways, the tip, the tip in the body or just the body to create so many different strokes. So play around with all of the different strokes that just using the tip can do to create grass and stems. Now we're going to combine what we've learned together. So I'm doing some of the bigger strokes using the body of my brush, then switching quickly to the tip of my brush to create some of those tinier strokes. So just remember, you can look at a reference picture, but for the most part, the bulk of the foliage on a plant is near the base. The leaves are typically bigger. And then as it goes out towards the end of the stem, they can be smaller. That is not always the case. So again, use a reference picture. But when you're practicing this look, you can try that using your bigger strokes uh, towards the base, adding some of your really thin strokes for stems or kind of a grassy feel. And then as you get towards the ends, maybe doing some really light, tiny, quick strokes for the ends of the leaves that are getting smaller. Now, I'm just doing this over and over again. This is a practice that you can do on any scrap piece of paper, just practicing, 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 moving your brush quick, moving it in different ways to create different looks, making the foliage move different directions, taller, shorter, wider, all of that stuff. Just practicing knowing how to move your brush will help you in your painting because you'll have the confidence to know that if I move it this way, it'll give me the look that I want. And those are the mark making strokes. So there are lots of different strokes for leaves, but again, remember this is intuitive mark making for leaves. And when I say intuitive, it just means when you're just want to free flow, mark up some leaves on your paper without having to precisely th paint them and think about it too much, this is this practice. So take that practice sheet, practice it over and over again. And I'm not joking. If you have a scrap piece of paper or a painting that failed, use the back of it. Just practice these strokes. It will become more natural to you over time. So I am using my Letter Sparrow palette. I love this palette. You guys need to check her out. She is always linked in my description below. She is a handmade watercolor business. Her name's Kelly. She's amazing. I love her handmade paints more than like Windsor and Newton. Don't tell them I said that. Um, they're so creamy. They're so bright. I, anyway, love them. Uh, we have a, a palette that is coming out in September together, and it's called a split primary palette. So it's where you have your warm and your cool primaries, the traditional and the cyan magenta uh, yellow that I typically use uh, together in one palette. And then I also included indigo and a deep green because I just love those for color mixing. <laughs> um, that's the palette that I'm using for this painting today. Now you saw my quick sketch in the beginning. Uh, sketches are sketches. It's hard to teach sketching. I just looked at a reference picture for lots of different kinds of pots and plants, not a specific reference picture, just Google, Googling reference pictures, Googling pictures of plants. <laughs> so after I've done the sketch, I am going in with the leaves. I'm actually not going to talk over this tutorial very much because we did talk a lot about mark making and I want you to enjoy the process with some music, but I did the leaves in real time so you can really get a feel for how each of these leafy plants is created using some of those intuitive strokes that we talked about in the beginning of this video. And then I will kind of speed through some of the designs for the pots because that's not really the point, but it is kind of fun to see it, but I just don't want this video to be like an hour long. So I just want you to watch and see what types of strokes I'm making for each type of potted plant. Also remember to start with some of your lighter values first. We talked about this in the light versus shadow um, YouTube video that I kind of referenced at the beginning of this video, and I will put the link to that video in the description as well so you can reference back to that. But start with your lightest values and tap in some of your darker values while it's still wet, and you can always come back in and add your darker values for contrast and detail at the very end. But start light, then you'll keep your light and you won't lose it, and um, just have fun. Remember, it's just paper. 
it's going to be okay. And every time you put your brush to the paper, you are making progress. Progress to where you want to be. And we're all just on a learning journey. (laughs) Okay, time for some music and I'll let you watch the process and I will see you at the end. Oh, and I almost forgot because I know someone's going to ask the colors that I'm using since you probably don't have these colors from Kelly. I am using Cad Yellow, Lemon Yellow, Cad Red, Quin Magenta, uh, Ultramarine Blue, and Cerulean Indigo, and a Olive Green. So those are the colors that would be comparable um, in a typical palette to what I am using here. And I'm pretty much using all of the colors to mix in with the greens and the pots. Just so you know. Okay.
And that is it. You made it to the end of the video. Thank you for still being here. Uh, this video is all about practicing your mark making intuitively. So keep practicing. You will get better the more you practice. And then when you go to paint your paintings, it will become second nature. You won't even have to think about it. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.